everybody. How you doing? Um, today I'm going to show you how I make my country style ribs. I think I've done them on the smoker for you um, out out at the uh, outside kitchen. But I came home yesterday and stopped at the butcher shop down the road from us. And they had some nice country style ribs on sale for $1.99 a pound. So I couldn't pass them up. I've got a couple more packages up in the fridge or freezer. But these I went ahead and sprinkled with my... Um, dry seasoning mix and I'll put a link down below to my dry seasoning mix in the description along with this recipe but I just coated them real well with the dry seasoning mix now I did add some of my mom's onion powder that she dehydrated for me so I just want to let you know that was added in additionally so these have sat overnight and let's see get a little fork here if I use my finger some of you are gonna freak out so I'm going to pressure cook these. It's a two-step process because I want them to taste more like they've been cooked outside. So first we're going to pressure cook them. And I pressure cook them for about 25 minutes. I let a natural release of the pressure so they continue still cooking after the 25 minutes as the pressure decreases. So I'm just going to first, let me put about maybe, I'll just put the whole cup, a cup of um, water in there. And then I'm going to put in my ribs. And for those of you that don't know what a country style rib is, it is a pork shoulder cut into strips. And they call it country style ribs. And sometimes you can find them cheaper um, than pork chops and different things. But you can also get your own pork shoulder and just cut it into strips and make your own. That can come out a lot cheaper. Sometimes you can get a, a roast for like 99 cents a pound. So I'm just gonna place those down in there. We'll get rid of this. Put these here. So as you can see, the ribs are just down in. Now I am gonna put some of my dried green and red peppers or dehydrated. Just put those in there. I'm just gonna put about maybe a third of a cup. Because once we take these out of the pressure cooker, we're going to put them in the toaster oven, oven, your broiler, whatever you have. And we're going to put some barbecue sauce on them and we're going to toast them up. So it gives it more of the smoker and barbecue texture. So I'll put this on. Like I said, I got this on 25 minutes. Got it on uh, natural pressure release. That just means I'm not going to touch it. It's just going to slowly release pressure. You can also put it on instant and... Um, immediately let this steam out, but you're not going to have them cooked as long and they're not going to be as tender. So I like to use the natural pressure release. So it's going to probably take about 20, 15 to 20 minutes for that pressure to release. So I'll be back in about what, 45 minutes and show you what we got. Everybody, welcome back. And the uh, Instapot just finished pressure releasing. So let me open this up now. When you open up your Instapot or any pressure canner, always tilt the lid towards you so the steam goes the other direction. So I'm gonna pick it up and I always put it over top of the pot because you can see some of the water's dripping down in there. All right. It smells so good in here. And sorry, I took off earlier so fast and got this together. Getting home now, I mean, I've got like 15, 20 minutes before dark. So I had to get back there and feed the quail, check on the quail, because we've got seven hens and seven roos. I don't know how I come up with that combination. You can only have one rooster per four to six hens. I had that kind of combination, and my roosters are just neat little crapper crappers. Um, here's a picture. This is what they did. I call her um, Loretta just tore up her head. I'm not sure why. And some people told me when I was talking to them on Facebook and some of the groups that it's their breeding thing. No, this isn't breeding. He didn't pull just a few feathers out. He was just whomping on her and he had blood all over the front of him. Uh, he got thrown out of the thing real quick and he's now in solitary confinement. And I think he's being sentenced to the uh, pressure cooker or the slow cooker real soon because I'm not going to tolerate that. So unfortunately, all of my roosters are separated. I've got two in the brooder separated. So there's one in one because they both were picking on people. And then I got two, uh, two roosters up in one pen and three down in the other are getting along. Then I got my hens in opposite directions. So I'm not sure why the roos are being the way they are. 
So I just had to get out there real quick and check on them and get them fed and watered because I'm having to change their water a couple times a day now when it's freezing. Because I said, oops, don't want that to fall apart because I don't want to, I don't have a heating system for them. So let me get this one out. This one's nice and tender. There's all of our ribs. Now I'm just going to coat them with some barbecue sauce. And I've got the uh, toaster oven going already, 500 degrees uh, broil. I'm just gonna put these in, and I'm just using Sweet Baby Ray's. It's a honey, this is honey barbecue. Because I didn't take the time to make my own. But this is always my go-to when I don't have time to make my own. Because I just like the flavor of it. And it's usually on sale. <laughs> so we get that. I'm going to just get a little spoon and kind of take the back of the spoon and spread this out a little bit. It is going to loosen up. It's kind of thick now because it was cold in the fridge. And it's going to go down over the sides of these ribs. But I'm going to put them in the broiler back here. And I'm going to watch them. They're probably not even going to take five minutes. And this is just putting a nice little crust on them. So it feels like you put them on the barbecue or the smoker. And we'll slide these in here. Let them start doing their thing. We'll get the pressure cooker out of the way. There we go. Get it unplugged. We'll set it back here so it's out of our way for now. But for those of you who's asking a lot of questions about the quail, I'm gonna leave that there. Um, we do, like I said, I have 14 quail, seven of each, seven roosters, seven hens. Um, one of them is a, um, what they call a jumbo. That's Holly. Uh, she's white. Here's a picture of her. She's the one that we hatched. Unfortunately, when we did our hatch, I think I got 24 eggs and only one of them was fertile. Well, actually, I'm lying. Three of them were fertile. The rest were not fertile. Two of them tried to hatch and during their pipping stage, I don't know if the humidity wasn't high enough, but two of them did not make it out of the shell. The rest we candled and they were not even fertile. They didn't even try to hatch to uh, become anything. But Holly is, and here's a picture of her as a baby, the day she hatched. She was so cute. She was like this big. I mean, you saw the size of those eggs that they come out of and she was just the most adorable. She was yellow when she hatched and within, let's see, two weeks. This is what she looked like in two weeks. They grow fast. Um, so she's a jumbo and the rest of them I ended up, cause I didn't want her to be by herself since she was the only one that hatched. And I found a gentleman up in, uh, almost at the Kentucky border who raised quail and he had standard quail. They're just the regular size quail. And he had some that were the same age eggs who were born or hatched two days after she did. So I got those and put in with her so she wouldn't be by herself. Unfortunately, his males are mean little things. So I'm not going to use those for breeding. Those will be going to the freezer camp or to the Instapot or the, the crock pot. Make me some uh, quail and dumplings. It's got chicken and dumplings. And then this, like I said, and I think I did talk to you about it in my uh, eggnog video. I'm going to be getting eggs in January. So those will all be jumbos. Um, they'll probably be Italians and there's different colors of Katornix quail and most of them, the brown ones are what you mostly see, the wild or the pharaoh. But I'm gonna be getting the jumbo because they are a little bit larger birds. They're about the size of a, um, what's it called? Cornish game hen, just about that size. And their eggs are a little bit bigger. So you can use two eggs per uh, one chicken egg instead of three eggs per chicken egg. Let me check our ribs here because I don't want them to burn because I'm hungry. But yeah, I have to get home real quick and get back there and get everybody fed, get everybody watered. The females are just friendly as can be. They keep trying to jump out and to, on the little egg box in the front and I pet them and put them back in. They keep coming back out to play. But I gotta get that done, get the light back up and then get into the workshop where I've got the brooder and two of the roos in there and get them taken care of. So I can't imagine what it's gonna be like when we get the goats and get the chickens. It's gonna be really crazy up here and I'm gonna love it. So. I'll be back in just a few minutes when I get the ribs out and we'll talk to you then. Okay, so I just checked on these. These look amazing. They're done. I'm just gonna turn this off and pull them out. Actually, let me put, let's put a towel down for now to set these on. So I don't wanna burn the table 
top there. There we go. Nice and hot and bubbly. Can't tip it much more because I'm afraid they're gonna fall right over. Let me get these out of the pan because I am all kinds of hungry. Ooh, that one's nice and tender. Put them up there so they're nice and pretty. Get this pan out of the way. And we're going to give these a try. Probably not going to need this knife. I'm not sure why I did. Nope, I'm not going to need it. Those are nice. They're just falling apart. Look at that steam coming off there. I'm going to put it in my face. I'm going to burn my face. Okay, so I'm going to let this stuff cool off a little bit because I'm going to burn my face if I stick it in there and in my mouth. And I'm going to tell you about some of the other animals we'll be getting. We're going to get um, Nigerian dwarf goats. They're a good milking goat. Um, I'm hoping to find a nanny that's either just had babies and they're kitted and had, maybe get her and the kids or maybe that she was just weaned off so we can have milk immediately. If not, hoping to get a nanny that's still pregnant. Um, Nigerian dwarf goats are different than regular goats. Most goats only, you can breed twice a year. Nigerian dwarfs, like once a month, they go into heat so you could breed them. So if we get a couple of nanny, or female goats, we should be able to have milk all the time, which is what we're gonna be drinking. Um, no more buying at the store. Um, some people ask why we're not getting a cow. We don't have the room for a cow up here. We don't have the grazing area for a cow. Goats, we got plenty of woods. We got a little bit of green out there. There's plenty of stuff for them to eat and they're easier to keep. And the Nigerian dwarf goats are just a little bit bigger than Brody. So we'll have those. I'm also getting chickens, some guinea hens and probably turkeys. That'll be the primarily the beginning. I'm also thinking about getting um, a miniature donkey. Um, that's kind of like for protection of the animals because they will guard against coyotes and kick the crap out of them and they, if they can get to them. But we'll also get a guardian livestock dog too. So I'm thinking by the end of summer, this coming year, 2024, we're gonna have animals all over the place. It looks like this has stopped steaming so bad. So now I'll quit talking and stalling and give this a taste. Mm. I do not need that. These are so t tender, so moist. This is, this is an easy throw together. As you've seen, I came in, took them out of the refrigerator, stuck them in there, went and did my chores, took care of the animals. Quail, I call them my animals. And came back and they're just delicious. Now you don't have to put them in the here with the barbecue sauce, but I just like to, you know, caramelize it up a little bit like I had it on the grill. Doesn't taste like it's on the grill. Don't have that smoky taste. But when it's 30 degrees outside or below 30 degrees outside, this is a quick, easy fix. So give this a try. If you have any questions, um, just leave them down below in the comments. I'm gonna put this recipe um, down below in the um, description. It's also on my website, gregs-kitchen.com. If you have any questions and you don't see me for a little bit, you can check my website, Facebook. I'm on Facebook and our community page here. I'll be putting more things there. I appreciate mom helping fill in while I was busy. We're getting everything built out here and getting everything done and the change of the weather. So. Looks like you're going to see me a little bit more now because I'm stuck inside in the cold when I can't do stuff outside. So we'll get a few more recipes. So until next time, y'all take care. I appreciate you all. Don't forget to hit the like button. And a lot of you have said that you're not getting notifications of my videos. Go check, make sure you're still subscribed because the anarhythm, logarithm, whatever rhythm that the YouTube has keeps taking people off. And it's not just our channel here all the channels, people keep getting dropped off there. So just go back and make sure that you are subscribed and hit the bell. That'll let you know when we put a, drop another video and put one up. And until next time, take care. Love you all and God bless. Bye-bye.